Welcome back, everyone. And in this video, I am going to make, so when I drive the Tesla into the garage, the garage opens automatically. Don't even need to push a button. It recognizes, hey, I'm coming home, and opens that bad boy up. So I went on to eBay and got myself one of these bad boys, and we're gonna get it installed. Now this right here is a home link, and it used to come standard with Teslas, but not anymore. Now it's an extra, it's like $300. You have to go to Tesla, create an appointment, they install it, and then you come home and then you link it with your garage. But $300 is too much, so I went on eBay, got my own, and I'm just gonna install it myself. Save myself like half the money. So mine came with the actual module, and it also came with the bracket. So I definitely wanted to get the, the whole thing. So I got that. It just did not come with any sort of screw that's supposed to go through here. So I looked through what I have. It's supposed to be an M6 by one and around 25 uh, millimeters. So I've got two different sizes. This one's closest, this one's a little bit shorter. I also got myself uh, a little bit of a washer just to make sure it fits through this kind of fat hole. So that's really all you need. So we've got that. Now we just need to get to the Tesla, pop the frunk open and take out the tub. And I mean, this is a super easy install. Anyone can do this. Now that we've got the frunk open up, we're going to take off this trim panel, which is really easy. They just pop up, clips everywhere. And that is done. Next up, empty out this. And now we can get out all the 10 millimeters. So the first one, the one I always forget, is this one right up here, right next to the washer reservoir. And then you've got one here, 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 here. And the last one is going to be right under here. So I've already taken all of those out and we're just going to pop this little clips out like so, lean it forward because we've got some wiring in here. And we're just gonna disconnect the wiring. If you do have the aftermarket little lighting strip up in here, just disconnect that too. And once it's disconnected, put it inside the tub. You've got two more 10 millimeters here. And once those two are out, we can take this whole thing. There's a few clips up here, which we can pop loose up here. There it is. And we can just grab this whole tub and put it off to the side. And once you put the tub on your other car, we're free. We've got everything in here. So if you have a Model Y, this is where it starts to get a little different. It's going to be right over here. You're gonna have your wiring harness and you'll have one extra, you'll pull it from there. If you have a Model 3, you're gonna have your wiring harnesses down here that we're gonna pull from to install this. So now that you're actually at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take off these pieces of tape. So this white one and blue one, so we've got some freedom. This is the connector that we need. This is gonna be plugged into it. The only other one is this one here with the blue little skirting on there. We're gonna leave that one alone, but we wanna get this stuff taken apart because this is going to be our new anchor that's gonna come right here. And then where we're gonna mount it up should be right here. Now, if you have a Model Y, it's very easy. There's a spot uh, right where the connector is, like there's a opening and you just put it there. Everything fits beautifully. It's like, it's meant for it. However, with the Model 3, it's not so much. So I looked in the service manual and it says to take off the front bumper to be able to do this. It's supposed to be mounted like right around here up front somewhere. But the issue is, I don't wanna take out the front bumper and no one else does. I've seen a bunch of other people and they just kinda of like mount it somewhere over here. But there's also an issue with that. It, that's the easy way, that'll get it done but it won't be 100%. So the module that goes in here has a sensor and that sensor needs to have the best path out. So if you do put it down there, you have your crash bar in the way. You, that, that's just more stuff in the way. You want it ideally above your crash bar. So you've got the bar that goes across and then you've got the plastic bumper right up here. So ideally, let's see better on this side. Ideally, you want it sitting above it. So like this one, if you wanted to like put it upwards like that on the inside, that would be a good place because then it would be able to point right out there. However, we can't do it on that side because the plug won't fit there. 
can't do it on this side because it's being used for the, the hatch release. Pretty sure we could swap it, but I think the best place for it would be this one right here. So this is a threaded port, just like uh, that one and that one and, and that one and that one and that one. They're just open. This, I'm pretty sure, is where it's supposed to be, right there. <laughs> However, that's a, that, is, that is easier said than done to be able to reach your hand up there, put a bolt through that or through here, and then thread it into there to get it tight enough. So that's what I am contemplating right now, whether to just do it the easy way or try to get in here or maybe even just take off the front bumper. All right, so I did end up using the smaller screw that I had, so M6 by uh, something smaller than 25, so you can probably go like 15 or 20, but I did uh, take apart the front bumper. I didn't completely take it off, but I basically did everything to take it off. So you just take off all the bolts up front, and then over here on the side, you take off the three uh, little pins, the little plastic pins, and then on the inside, right up here where the bumper is attached up here, you just look up and you've got three. So there's one, there's two, and then a third one goes right under there. Um, you just take out the last one that's right up here, right where that hole is right there. Same thing with the other side, and then you take all the pins off on the bottom, so where my splitter was, and then you just pull out. These ones are a little difficult. Uh, you can get them started and then get, uh, uh, that's why I got my, there it is. That's why I got my little pick in there. Push down on those tabs, push it out. Really, I just have it pushed out this far so I can get my hand to the front because I tried to go underneath and do it, but it was not working. And all the pictures that you see online about this thing being put up front, even in the service manual, is wrong. There's no mounting point to where it says on there there's it doesn't look like what it is the old ones look like that the newer ones not the brand new ones not the highlands but the newer ones like mine's a 2023 they don't look like that but that is the best spot is this one right in here I'm about to go in and get it in there route the wire up and put in the module but this is right above the crash bar as you can see so it's gonna have a clear signal i've got that mounted on the inside it's not going anywhere it doesn't fly around it's really difficult because you have to really crank it in so it doesn't flop around and i was going to do a zip tie but there's nothing to put a zip tie through so that's not going anywhere i just took this off uh for this you just need to pop this back so you can push it down like a normal uh little lever and then push it up is going to be locking again so now we need to come up here and plug it in there we go. I just got it fit in there. You can see which way it goes. That's the back side. That's the front side is the one with the lock. I pushed the lock down so it doesn't go anywhere. Nice and solid. All right. Well, that's done. I guess I can put this little locking piece in here to keep that out of the way. And we're good. Now we can just put everything back the way it was and uh, we'll do this stuff on the inside. So before I put everything back together and possibly waste a bunch of time. I've got it plugged in. Now I'm going to do the inside process to make sure it works before I put everything back together. So we're going to go down to our menu and we're going to go to, which one is it? The uh, software. And we're going to hold down whatever your model is. And then you can see we have access. We're going to put in service. Okie doke. Says yes. So now we are in the service mode. Now from here, we get to be able to mess around with our home link. Low voltage, home link, retrofit, and we're gonna go ahead and run it. So hold the right turn signal and in the active position. So right turn signal, so I'm gonna push up on that and then down on the brake for eight seconds. go. So we'll start that bad boy and it's going to reboot after everything's done. Don't know how long this is going to take. And then we go right into our reboot and 
The blinker is still on. I don't want to turn the blinker off. I'm too scared. Second restart. This one took a little bit longer, but it's starting to boot up now. And I really need to clean this screen. Okay, we've booted back up again. I'm going to turn the blinker off. Okay, nothing exploded. So, I think it's done rebooting. I think it did it about three or four times, but now we are back here. Everything looks pretty good. I'll give it a second. So we've got nothing happening, so I'm going to go back to our low voltage. We're going to go back to our home link, and you can see all the green. It's beautiful. What we can do is we can test it while we're here. So this is going to perform a self-test. We're going to run it, and it passed. So we are looking good. All done with this. We know we have it. We can get out of service mode. So let's close out of this, hold down, and now we are back to our regular screen. Now, it's not going to pop up immediately. Yeah, so if I come back up here, it's it's not going to. It needs basically another reboot. So walk away from the vehicle and come back, and it should basically reboot itself, and it'll be right up there waiting for us. Gave it a few minutes, walked away, it locked, came back, and here we are. Now let's jump back into here. And there it is. Now I can create my home link and I can enter a name. Home. Home is my home. All right, had to look this up, but transmit mode. So it seems like standard mode is if you have your little clicker, your garage door opener, and the other mode, which is D mode, is basically learn. So if you don't have a remote, that's as far as I can think, but I've got a remote and I think most people do. So we'll do standard mode. So I've got my remote, so let's keep going. So I need to stand in front of the car and press and hold the button. So it's about there. Oh, okay. So we did get some flash. Okay, cool, so it did get it. So now I need to hit the learn button on my garage door opener, unless it has quick train, which I have no idea if it does. I got it into the learn mode. It was just holding down the button. Now I'm gonna hit continue and it'll do stuff. Come on, there we go, now it's training. It must have been working because that light is now solid. Aha, uh -huh. training complete. And we're done, cool. So it looks like I have a few things here. Auto open when arriving, hell yes, that would be awesome. Um, and auto close while leaving. Uh, yeah, that will be awesome. Uh, I'll give it a, a little bit of chime when I do it. So it wasn't working, and I figured out that at least the Genie brand of openers, there's a little light on the inside, and if it's if it's red, it's good. If it's green, it's not. Something like that. So you'll see if I press this last button, which doesn't go into anything it's red, the second one is green, and the top one is green, which the top one I have programmed. So in order to program it to the other color, I guess it's like learning modes or something like that, you hold it down until both of those lights come on at the same time, and then you double tap that button and it should change the color. See how it's green? can see it's both colors it's green and red after double tapping it it'll turn red i took too long but now when i hit it it turns red so let me try the process again now that we have done that to the remote and we make sure it's red and not green that was our problem so i went through the same process went through so we hit our little garage here went through the whole settings and reprogrammed it now it works so I can get out of that and I can hit activate. You might have to hit it a few times for it to actually start working. But once you do, it'll open your garage. Now we're in the future. And that was the installation and the setup. So I hope a little troubleshooting helped you all out. The installation helped you all out since there's really not anything out there for the Model 3. At least the newer, not the newest, but that whole thing. So if you're having issues, I hope they hopefully helped you out. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.